I'm going to talk about turf grass establishment. There are a number of reasons why we establish new grasses. It may be just that the existing grass has got thin and bare because of the amount of games that it's had or it's been worn away. Or it may be that there has to be total renovation with the existing grass killed and then brand new grass put in. The most important thing is seedbed preparation. Seedbed preparation basically means um, how we prepare the soil pri prior to putting seed or sod down on it. Ideally the soil is weed free, free of rocks and glass and other deleterious materials. It's graded correctly and smooth and it would have a fine crumbed texture. Um, we call this a tilth. So this particular picture shows a really bad seedbed. Another thing in relation to the seedbed is that we have to try and remove as much organic material off the soil as possible so that the seed or the sod is in direct contact with the soil. This organic layer on turf is called thatch. It is a combination of dead and dying stems, roots, rhizomes and other organic plant material. It builds upon the surface, it's spongy and it prevents the seed or the sod from being in contact with the moist soil. This is what that looks like in real life. As you can see, the top layer is thatch, um, could be a couple of inches thick, and then mat is a combination of the degraded organic mixed with soil, and then this underlying soil is at the bottom there. On a small scale, um, grass establishment can be done with a handheld tool like this, which is called a weasel. You scratch away at the surface to create that tilth. You can add good quality topsoil or sand at that time apply the seed and then scratch it all in together. Um, that would be a small scale renovation. On a larger scale this equipment can be used. It's called a de-thatcher or a scarifier and it has blades underneath that scratches all the grass and the organic material so that the soil is exposed and there of course is the seed bed on the right hand side ready for seeding or sodding. There's large scale equipment that will till a large scale area, that will bury rocks and bury the organic material and, and then create a level seed bed. This particular piece of equipment has revolutionized the sports turf industry in Europe. This is called a Coro field top maker. The equipment goes over the surface, it removes all the grass and the organic and puts that on a conveyor belt up into a, a trailer at the side. And the reason why it's revolutionized the industry is that this whole process takes just a few hours. So it's really expedited the renovation process. On the left hand side is the different grasses that we use on athletic fields. And in the middle column it talks about seed rate. Um, and you can see that with grasses like Kentucky bluegrass, the seed rate or how much seed we put out per given area is quite small. We only put down between one and three pounds of seed in a thousand square foot area and that is because Kentucky bluegrass seed is very very small uh, by comparison if you look at tall fescue we're putting out six to eight pounds of seed in a given area because the seed size of tall fescue is very large so the seed rate depends upon the seed size as well as that there are times of year that are different for the types of grass that you are seeding so the best time of year to do renovations and to establish grass for cool season grasses is in the fall when the soils are warm, there's very little weed pressure and there's timely rains. For warm season grasses the best time to establish them is in late, sp late spring and early summer where they have at least three months to get established and be mature before the first frost. We're going to talk about sprigs and plugs and sod. Um, sodding can be done all year round as long as the ground isn't frozen. As well as seed rate and time of year to establish grasses, certain grasses are quicker at germinating and establishing than others. The, the fastest grass of all our turf grasses for sports is perennial ryegrass. It can ger the seed can germinate, which means that it sends out the root, the new shoot and the new root. It can germinate in up to just three days and it can be playable in four weeks. Kentucky bluegrass is a lot slower. It's a week to three weeks to germinate and then it takes at least 10 to 12 weeks before you can play on it. Um, so if you only have a very small window of time, this is why perennial ryegrass is used so much because it's so quick. 
The difference between hold and unhold Bermuda grass, the hold Bermuda grass seed has had the outer layer of seed scratched away so that it germinates quicker. This is another reason why the establishment speed is important, not just because we can play on them quicker, but because faster growing species can outcompete weeds much better. As you can see, Kentucky bluegrass on the right, because it's so slow, can't really compete with the weed, which in this case is uh, crabgrass. It's very important to control weeds during the establishment phase to give the grass um, an advantage. You can see this is a study we did where no weed control, a weed control product is called a herbicide. No weed control was applied on the left and weed control was applied on the right. So it is possible to get a clean seed bed um, if you put down a herbicide and there are two or three herbicides that are available that will kill weeds that will not kill or harm the grass. In addition to weed control it's important to have some kind of disease control because young grass is susceptible to diseases and you can buy seed that is coated with a fungicide this is called apron coated seed and it gives protection against disease for about the first week to ten days this is one of the most common diseases on seedling turf this is called pythium and it actually will kill the grass so it's important if if you are doing a renovations in the spring and in the summer when the temperatures are warmer and the, the seedlings are young, they are susceptible to this, it's important to use a fungicide or to get um, chemically treated seed or apron treated seed. Starter fertilizer is also important. This is a, um, a plant food that's given at the very beginning of the seeding or sodding process and a starter fertilizer typically has more, has phosphorus in it. So if you look at the three numbers on the bag on the left, 18, 24, 12, that is in relation to the percentage of nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium that's in that bag of fertilizer. And you can see then that 24% of phosphorus is in there, which is considered a starter fertilizer because it helps root initiation and grass establishment. There are many different ways that we can put seed down onto the seed bed. The first is with a drop or broadcast spreader. The seed goes in the hopper and is dropped directly onto the soil. This is what that would look like. The, the problem with this is that that seed now is vulnerable to drying out. It's vulnerable to being eaten by birds and washed away by rain. And this is a, an example where the seed was put on the surface. It was covered with straw but then torrential rain and lack of irrigation and mismanagement altogether has caused this seeding to fail and m most of the grass is dead. So it's really important to keep the grass covered, the grass seed covered, keep it moist, uh, keep it fed. One of the ways that we cover it is with straw, as you can see on the left, or you could, it could be covered with a top dressing of good quality loam sand or um, topsoil. One of the ways that we use um, to cover grass seed is to use a growth blanket or a cover like this. The one on the top left is called an evergreen cover which is common in, with the professional field managers. And you can buy them that cover the whole field like you can see bottom left that's in Copenhagen at Denmark's National Stadium. Or you can buy them just to put down say the middle of the field that's top right there is Manchester United. Or you can buy just very small portions or pieces that you can put say in a soccer goal mouth and that picture there is from Manchester City Stadium. And the role of the growth blanket is not just to keep moisture in but it's also to stop the seed from eroding away and washing away and it's to, it does retain some heat as well and it also may keep uh, people off from, from using the field if they see that there's covers out. The best way to get seed soil contact is to put the seed actually in the soil and these machines are called slit seeders. The seed goes in a hopper again but this time blades underneath the hopper will scratch and create a groove or a slit in the soil and then the seed is dropped into that slit. So it guarantees that the seed is in contact with the moist soil. Ideally the slit seeder would be run in two directions diagonally so that we didn't get lines like this. This would be an ideal uniform distribution of the seed, two directions diagonal. Another way of conserving moisture on seeds is to put the seeds in a hydro mulch. This is called hydro mulching and it is a liquid spray-on mulch that contains some kind of paper pulp or carrier 
fertilizer seed and most recently they've also been putting weed killers in there to prevent weed seed germination this is what it would look like the advantage of this of course is that again it would stop soil erosion and seed erosion moving away from seeding other ways that we can establish grasses is by sodding and that's sometimes called turfing outside of the United States sod or turf is basically mature grass that's cut into sections or rolls and this is this is one of those um, types of sod roll we call this big roll thick cut sod and this is what's used in the NFL sometimes when the middle of the field say is worn away in the middle of the season that old grass will be cut out and then these machines come in and this big roll thick cut sod is put down the middle of the field it's so heavy and it's so resilient that it can be painted and played upon immediately and here again is sod being installed in Ohio Stadium many years ago the advantages of sod is that it's instantaneous if it's big roll thick cut sod it can be played on immediately if it's thin cut sod it can be played on in 10 to 12 weeks it gives instant green cover it prevents weeds from coming in and it gives an opportunity to um, have the exact grass on the field that you want on the field and here is sod laid in a in a soccer goal mouth when the sod is laid down it's laid in a brickwork fashion to try and minimize the amount of seams because the seams between the sod rolls or pieces uh, have a tendency to dry out warm season grasses as well as being seeded or sodded could also be sprigged or plugged and basically that means that very small sections of the plant are chopped up and spread out over the soil and pressed into the soil with a spiked roller or something like that and these very small tiny pieces of the warm season grass then will root and will spread laterally and fill in some of the post seeding and sodding practices that are really important number one would be irrigation the seed the new seedlings and the new sod or sprigs or plugs must not be allowed to dry out their very success depends upon them being kept uh, watered most professional and NCAA facilities will have in-ground pop-up sprinklers like this uh, parks and rec and schools may have a water cannon or a rain train that's attached to a hose and moves very slowly across the field which would be something like that would look like this also important especially with seeding is that is the procedure called syringing syringing is not watering to get the soil wet or to maintain healthy growth of grass syringing is to wet the seed down or to wet the turf down or sod down in order to to prevent it from getting stressed or from drying out so in the early stages of grass establishment syringing is done sometimes four to seven times a day especially on a hot windy day just to cool things down a bit and lastly the most important thing uh, for post seeding and sodding practices is mowing as soon as the grass gets to two to two and a half inches tall it needs to be mowed and then mowed regularly the mowing does two really important things first of all it presses down the seed or the sod for even better seed soil contact and once the grass is established really really well what it does then it presses down on the base of that grass plant and it encourages tillering which is um, the lateral growth of that grass plant so you get a much thicker denser healthy sward of grass if you can mow it regularly during that establishment period and that concludes the slideshow turf grass establishment